Have you ever wondered where the sun rises first? In America, the state of Paraíba stands in the first place when it comes to receive the first rays of sunshine. Life shows itself early in diverse ways. We begin the day already with the feeling of courage and determination to start our routine when contemplating the wonderful places of Paraíba. By starting the day with a shower and a cup of coffee, people from Paraíba carry with themselves a sense of pride in the state they live in. We are proud of our history of injustice and resilience, proud of our diverse and lively culture, and proud of our places that, even often overlooked, are a great representation of the beauty we have to show to the world. You might have already heard about the biggest São João party in the world, Ariano Suassuna, Jaxo do Pandeiro, or our marvelous beaches, but the peculiarities of this place are even more distinctive when you take a closer look at it. You will now know one of the most poetic sunsets in Paraíba. A farmer's market where you can buy from a pigeon pet to spices from all over the world. Hollywood? No, not that one. A square that held a hundred-year-old fake news and the place the dinosaurs used to call home all fit in this state full of history. The first place we're going to show you can be a little contradictory to the idea you might be building of it in your mind. For starters, the beginning of this documentary that starts showing the place closest to the sunrise in America will actually present you a beautiful sunset. Alligator's Beach holds the most famous sunset in Paraíba, yes. The beach, however, is a reef beach and its name is not after any alligator. Located in Cabeldelo, a harbor town in 10 minutes from João Pessoa, our first special place is a river beach that, in the 60s when seen from above, had the shape of an alligator's open mouth. Nowadays people go there for the experience of listening to Jurandido sax, playing music while the sun is setting, in what must be one of the nicest moments ever. Actually, he always plays the same song at sunset time, Maurice Ravel's Bolero. It all started with Jurandi playing sax to spice up his bar and attract more people there. It worked out so well that now he's a tourist attraction himself and dozens of people go there daily to enjoy the sunset and the music. In 2015, the government put down the bars for public patrimony issues, but that created a whole new experience. Instead of watching Durandi playing sitting at a bar, now he plays on a boat. Also, there are boat rides that take 90 minutes and it gets you even closer to the player and the sky. First, I'd like you to introduce yourself, your name and where you are from. My name is Rosana, I'm from Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais. Is it your first time in Paraíba? Yeah, it's my first time in Paraíba. I'm enchanted by the Northeast, so I already know all of it, and only Paraíba was missing. So I wanted to come and fall in love with it. They always speak nicely of it, and I enjoyed it more than I thought. Why Alligator River Beach? What have you heard about it? Oh, the sunset, this mood, it's very nice, isn't it? Everything here, those little shops, it's very nice, I think it's great. I came fearing it would rain and I found this wonderful sunset. 
and if the sun comes forth to us, it goes forth from us too. So, if you want to enjoy the whole sunset and get a good place to watch the show Jurandi puts, you should come around 4 p.m. Enjoy the ride, the sun, and the beginning of our journey. Let the music guide you throughout Paraíba. How about a program that combines good food, culture and history? A mandatory stop for homemakers who need to go grocery shopping for students to buy some snacks or for those who want to buy spices and seasonings. Campina Grande Central Fair takes the visitor to an experience that goes beyond ordinary shopping. The Centenary Central Fair is an exhaustible source for social, cultural, architectural and historical studies. At first, its beauty, complexity and size seem chaotic, but they reveal a rich environment created by human action that reflects decades of tradition. These traditions precede the very creation of the city, when it was still called Vila Nova da Rainha. The free fairs are Campina Grande's cornerstone. The city was developed from a great fair that used to take place around the Açude Velho, another very peculiar tourist attraction in Campina. Before coffee and cotton, the fairs represented the main economic activity of the city. Central Fair was considered the largest open-air fair in Brazil in the 1970s, and it has become known nationally for its diversity and scope. Nowadays, it is one of the largest fairs in Northeast Brazil. You may not be able to imagine how big it is. It's about 75,000 square meters. On Saturday, the busiest and most chaotic day, the fair can increase in size passing its limits through the streets and stalls. That's why it's said that everything you want and everything you need you can find at Central Fair. Fruits, vegetables, cereals, herbs, meats, animals, live or slaughtered, clothes, flowers, sweets, handcrafts, livestock accessories, regional food and a wide range of services. Those products and services are offered by unique characters that give life to the place. Saddlers, barbers, whalers, hawkers and so many others with their knowledge and traditional trades. Although you might know the Central Fair is a huge place with many many people selling different things you should get lost try to find different types of cheese or listen to conversations between elderly people. It's a place that gathers different cultures of Paraíba. You have probably watched the countless popular Hollywood movies shot in the United States. However, did you know that there is also a Hollywood in Brazil? Well, it's located in the state of Paraíba, Cabaceiras. The Hollywood in Nordestina catches people's attentions in the region by its exotic nature and by the very Hollywood in Nordestina sign, similar to the one in Los Angeles, California. It's a place full of beauties that has become a living stage for many movies. Since Cabaceiras is one place where it rains the least in Brazil, its natural light is perfect for shooting. Cabaceiras became famous throughout Brazil as the setting for over 30 films, including documentaries and national films, such as A Dog's Will and Land of the Strong.
There are also other tourist attractions in Cabaceiras, a historical cultural museum with a rich collection of antiques, the film memorial, registering many productions recording the town, and the Catholic Mother Church, the stage for scenes from a dog's well. The town is already a place that has several types of locations for you to shoot a film. If you want to shoot in another place, there is the historic center of Cabaceiras. If you want to go to a more natural place, there is Lajedo do Pai Mateus, that is inside the town, and so on. There are several things, there are several reasons why they come here. The town is a complete package for many things. Despite the importance for the time to be known as Hollywood Nordestina, it is very important for the whole state of Paraíba. Imagine, you arrive and, wow, we have a Hollywood here. We have a range of possibilities for film made in a tiny town like Cabaceiras. It is very important to have this recognition for our Hollywood. The shooting is never stopped. People from our town is always hired to work as figurants. We also go hand in hand with the production companies. It is very good because it is a very good exchange. Another old place is the handicraft market Zed Silla. The owner became well known after being a stuntman for the actor Rogério Cardoso, who played Father John. Cabaceiras also boasts beautifully preserved such as the 18th century multicolored casarões, big houses which have served as the backdrop for several national films. Let's imagine a time capsule built a hundred years ago being opened nowadays. What kind of objects did the people of that time keep in this capsule? Did they keep records of that time like photos or letters? Did they deposit valuable stuff like gold and jewels? And what if you told you there was nothing inside this capsule? A little bit frustrating, right? This is what happened in João Pessoa Square, in the town of Picuí a typical town square in the countryside of Brazil, but it holds a lot of history from Piquí. Some of the first houses built in the town are still there. Also, the main church in João Pessoa Square was built based on a promise that the population made to São Sebastião. At a time when a cholera pandemic was plaguing the city, People claimed that if the pandemic was over, they would build that church after São Sebastião, a healing saint. The square also has an obelisk, built in 1922, in honor of the centenary of Brazil's independence. By the way, this obelisk has an interesting story. There was a real moment in town that it was actually a time capsule that should be opened after a hundred years of its construction. It turns out this whole story was just fake news. Perhaps the longest fake news ever. A fake news that remained for an entire century. The city opened the obelisk during the celebrations of September 7th in 2022, and the population could confirm that the obelisk was not really a time capsule, unfortunately. However, after this day, the obelisk actually became a time capsule, because during the day of its opening, some objects were deposited inside the obelisk, which should be opened again after 100 years.
Our last ride will take us to a time machine standing in the middle of what would be just an ordinary town. What if you told you that it's possible to go back in time to a point in history where the human race was not even a thing and the dinosaurs were the kings of the world? It might sound impossible and even a little dangerous, but different from the Jurassic Park movie, here there is no need to bring those creatures back to life. We can just contemplate the existence by the memories they left behind, frozen in time. Our little story takes place in the town of Souza, where the most important discoveries of the so-called Valley of the Dinosaurs are located. This paleontological site was first explored in the end of the 20th century. That was the first time that something was pointing to the existence of Brazilian dinosaurs. Although, along all those years, the place has been studied by tons of local and foreign scientists, it was just at the end of 2002 that it was recognized as a natural monument. Today, the place that is known for the fossilized tracks, plants, partial bones of prehistoric animals and even some rock paintings is considered the biggest concentration of dinosaur footprints in the whole world. As you can see, this hole was a footprint taken in 1924, taken to the United States and not returned. That other one was also a footprint taken in the year of 1930, taken to England and also never returned. That is, they took it to study, but they haven't given it back. At that time, there wasn't a lot to forbid the removal. Nowadays, it is different. The entire area is preserved. With all these treasures of time, it's no surprise that Souza would be deeply touched and changed by all the traces of history. The Valley of the Dinosaurs became an important part of these people's lives, increasing the city's tourism and taking over the talks of the town. The place is a big part of Souza's identity. Have you ever visited any of those non-mainstream places? You should go by yourself to experience the culture of Paraíba in each of those spots. They summarize the different regions of our state. There are many wonders to be seen here. As the time passes and the work days come to an end, we finish the day with the feeling of gratitude for belonging to those incredible places. We now have the time to go and enjoy what is given to us. Walking around, sighting scene, spend some time there, admiring the wonders of life, while you can enjoy how different life is once the sun is set. There are no limits of time here. We brought you a piece of our history, some cultural treasures, some Paraíba hidden gems. What a joy to be paraibanos. Deixa que eu levo pra frente. Essa que é a história. Hum. Hum.